Uh, so today I want to kind of wrap up the, the, the last few weeks we've been talking about kind of personal growth and how to channel it and how to really, uh, really make you focus in on how to best channel your, your growth. And if you remember the last few weeks we've been talking about kind of how to channel it up and to the right and that it was kind of structured like this. And, and really where this, the original kernel of this idea came from is, you know, from the size perspective, is something that's called the, the Fibonacci number. Sometimes it's referred to as the, the golden ratio. And so does anybody know what the Fibonacci number is? It's, it's the, where it's, it's, it's a ratio that's, you know, one plus one equals two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, eight, 13, 21, 34, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so this keeps going and it's kind of like a, a geometric mean. And this is the, the number that you'll see a lot of times in nature and lots of different things that uh, you'll see it in uh, like honeybees and sunflowers and everything about placement. And also with like limb growth with trees that it's one branch then has two, which has three, which has five. And when you, when you also see it is in uh, a lot of seashells because what it, it ends up looking like when you take this approach is kind of like this. And so this is kind of when you see a seashell, like this is the same ratio of the Fibonacci. And so where this, this comes into play is when your growth starts out, it's really small, but then at each time that you move up a phase, it gets progressively bigger and, and progressively larger. And where this comes in is, is kind of in, in a, a stair step kind of growth where, you know, when you're going through the, the different floors, you know, the first, second, third, and fourth, you know, today I want to take that fourth level macro view of, of, this, of this scenario. And so in this scenario, you've got, uh, you know, beginner, novice, expert, and master. And what I mean by, from the Fibonacci standpoint of it getting bigger and bigger each time, is this really takes months, this takes years, this takes a decade or plural decades, and to become a, uh, a master, it's really a lifetime of work. And so why this becomes important, especially for entrepreneurs, is if this is the journey that you're on, this is a long time. And so when we, I talked to, uh, a couple of times at, at Wash U at the Scandalier Center about idea generation and where do ideas, you know, where do ideas come from, is, it's kind of the intersection of, of three things, of purpose, personality, and problems. And it's this area right here is where your business should be, or as an entrepreneurially minded person, this is where you know, the, the type of job that you should be looking for, the type of company that you're working for. Why do you think that this connects together? Why do you think that's as important of these components because of this stage? Right, so you've, you're going to have a long, long time of working on something, so it better be something that you're really, really passionate about, something that you really, really care about. It better be something that you're naturally good at, you know, because this is, your purpose is what, what are you really passionate about, what is the purpose of what you're doing, it's in alignment with you as a person. Personality is, how do you leverage your own, we all have our own little personality quirks, how do you leverage those things to either have a company or a, a job or a position that leverages those personality quirks? And then from a problem standpoint, what are the things that frustrate you, annoy you, or where are there opportunities? And so because this is going to be such a long, arduous journey, it better be something that you're passionate about. It better be something that you're naturally good at. Because if you're not naturally good at it, this process is going to be even more difficult. Because what happens is there's these points here that are those, the, where you've kind of reached your limit and it's starting to kind of move on to the next next phase. And so these are these are challenges because you know really in business we all like to think that growth is like this or you know of all the business plan competitions I've done it's always like this. Hockey stick. You know, but in reality growth is a stair step approach. You know and so if you are lucky enough to be going up and to the right, it's really a period of quick growth by pulling it back and trying to figure out how you just did that and try to accommodate for the growth that you just had, figuring out and, and kind of coming to. You know, that kind of comes back to also from the, 
the Pewebrian theorem one that we did. It's figuring out how to best accommodate for that growth. What's what's what happens at these points though is is something that it kind of will kind of pull together a bunch of different whiteboard wisdoms here is these are really moments of truth. These are moments where you're going to make a leap. And if you remember from, you know, the, the channel of, of growth, when you make one of these leaps, you're going to be leaping up into this area that's outside of your comfort zone. And so, you know, if you remember from, you know, the, the failure to follow your one is, you know, that's one of these moments where you're here and you know that you've got to make a leap and it's gonna leap of faith, and it's gonna be something that you really have to have a lot of confidence in because you may or may not make this initial jump from this step up to here, and you may end up down here, which is why it was important when we talked about you need to be able to do this on autopilot because once you get down to here, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, but now you know the exact path, and you know another way to, to try to attack this. And so, because what happens here is that you know, just like this is kind of a fractal where it's kind of a bigger picture of something smaller, so are, are these steps. It's not, it's not something that it goes like this all the way up. In reality, it's a, you know, it's a stair step within a stair step. And so you're always, because you have to do this process within the beginner tactics because you need to become a master of the beginner tasks. And so what's happening here is when you make this leap of faith is you have to let go of what you were doing to try to leap to try to make that hold. The other thing that this can be can be really really looked at is as inflection points. You know, we talked about in the entrepreneurial perseverance curve when we had your experience versus your passion, and we called this an inflection point. Same thing here. So what ends up happening is you have these inflection points at different stages in your business. If you remember, we talked about that these just don't happen once, they happen often and they happen you know, quite a bit. And so realistically what you've got is this is your experience curve and, and these are kinda each time you're gonna have a little inflection point that you've gotta decide you know, before you make this leap, is it something that you're going to you know, exit out of your business? Are you going to continue to do what you do, or are you going to pivot and try something new and try something that's bigger and more exciting? So that's what's happening at each stage, both in a business growth standpoint, but also for entrepreneurially minded people when they're making growths in, in, their own, in their own businesses. And so what ends up happening here is, you know, Brian and I talked a little bit after last week, and so we talked about, you know, success leaves, you know, breadcrumbs along the way. And so what you want to try to remember is that there's lots of people out here that have traversed similar planes. You know, and when we talked about, you know, what were the ways that we could move the experience curve? Do you guys remember? What, there, was a, there was two ways that we could move the experience curve. What were the two ways? Time and uh, passion or uh, time and experience. something. Time so. And experience. So it was, it was by being better at iterating what you do. That's how you can steepen the curve. And then also by learning from the experience of others is how you can move it up. So then at that point, you could both move it up and make it sharper. So you could kind of do one of these numbers, right? You remember that? And so the same thing can happen with your steps is if you can take time to learn from other people and pay attention to the successes that, and failures that other entrepreneurs have had or other people that have had before you in your field, then you can make this stair step go a little, a little uh, steeper and also a little bit uh, faster up and a little bit higher. And so it's really important to kind of pull all these elements together and understand how they all integrate in a, in a way that can make your business more successful and can make you more successful within your position. Because what ends up happening is, you know, the, the changes that we make, you know, the wheels, dials, and knobs, you know, these are all changes that we're making along the way, you know, and, and these little stair step growths that are a, a fractal of our big stairs. What was a wheel change when, as a beginner, 
you know, what was a wheel change on here, something that's of similar size and scope. When you get up a level, you know, that same level of change is only a dial. And when you get up a, a level above that, it's only a knob. And so in order to, the, the bigger your skill sets become or the bigger your company becomes or the more of experts you become, the bigger change you have to make in order to make an actual sizable, uh, noticeable difference in either your skill sets or in the way that your business executes. And so what ends up happening, you know, we talked about the, the pros and cons of wheels, dials, and knobs, is this leap becomes longer and longer, you know, as, as you know, if this is a knob, you know, this might be a, a wheel here, or a dial here and a wheel here, that these leaps become longer and longer. And the potential of uh, scary versus dangerous both go up. And so that's why you have to continue to build your base and be able to go on autopilot on these things in case it doesn't work. And you have to continue to push down that risk curve to make sure that when you take larger and larger chances to make a sizable change, that it doesn't bring you down or doesn't bring your business down. And so that's what today I wanted to kind of bring these all back together and kind of put a bow on it and see how they all play together and how all of these things kind of work together in a way that can really expedite your growth either as an entrepreneurially minded person or as an entrepreneur.